everyone. This is Dr. Jackie Zhang, and uh, we three are clinicians at Dr. Jackie Zhang Counseling and the Evaluation Associates. And this is Mitch Davenport. Hello. And uh, his credential is LCPC, Licensed Clinical Professional Counselor. And this is Megan. Megan is now a social worker. Mm -hmm. And her credential is LCSW. Licensed clinical social worker. So today we get together just trying to um, discuss some of the common questions from uh, clients. Um, so hopefully we can provide some insights, uh, helpful tips, uh, and answer the questions we normally would get from different clients. Uh, since right now in the pandemic, we don't usually do uh, face to face no more. We do telehealth a lot here. Uh, I think this is the social media could help us to kind of reach more people in the community. That's one of the benefits. Uh, so we are going to start uh, doing this on a monthly basis. Uh, we have staff meeting here once every month. So I think uh, we will take five to 10 minutes uh, to discuss about these um, therapy testing, uh, uh, client related topics uh, since we discussed the, most of those informations are included in the staff meeting anyway I think it's a valuable you know some of them can be helpful to to the people in the community so I think that's a good thing so we're going to today I pick a topic we're going to three people we're going to take turns to take to pick different topics so today is the first time we make this joint type of session I pick a topic the topic is why talking to friends and family members cannot replace therapy. Some people ask, um, you know, I talk to, to my cousin, my mom, my sister, my aunt, um, so why do I have, still have to come to therapy? Um, so uh, with that, we have some discussion. I will go first and now I will let the two clinicians uh, pick up um, to, to continue. The first point I have here uh, is um, usually when you talk to uh, friends or family member, it's difficult for them to sit there for 40 minutes straight. Sometimes it's 50 minutes straight, you know, just let you vent, let you talk without interu interrupt, uh, interrupting. Um, so, you know, in a therapy session, you have the full 40 minutes, not interrupted, talking to a professional that can guide you working through these these things. Normally when you talk to people um, that you know, they, they, they tend to give their opinions, like this happened to me, um, or they will say um, something distracting, you know, oh, this happened, or, you know, happened to me even worse, or something like that. So then you didn't really get the flow to fully uh, work through discussing about these issues. So that's the benefits of coming to therapy, you get an uninterrupted. Uh, environment and a safe environment. The second point I want to bring up is um, comes with the you know with the first point is it is a safe environment. Um, you know when you talk to other people, maybe you feel safe at that moment, but afterwards you really don't know well this person knows that person. And then you think about it, oh I forgot that person actually is the cousin of this person's <laughs> wife. So after a while, you're thinking about thinking about oh, I should not have said that because I mentioned something. I wish da da da. So then that just totally, uh, you know, breaking the point. That's that's not uh, uh, what you wanted the, the result you wanted because you ended up worrying about it the whole time instead of thinking about your own pro problem. You know, so. And a friend to talk, family talk, you don't know somebody, oh, let me pass on to another, you know, person that within the circle. So you ended up worrying more about it. And the third one is for some people that have experienced trauma, traumatic events, uh, when you talk about, we call the, you know, uh, relive, relive, really experiencing these trauma as you were talking about these things, they could open just like a, a, a open the gate, not the emotional uh, catharsis that it comes out um, without uh, appropriate guidance uh, or channeling or uh, working through these emotions. It can be dangerous because a lot of these things become abuse, you know, domestic violence or something happen. You really need a professional to be there to guide you instead of just oh, let everything out. And some of those are past trauma for years uh, that could cause uh, more emotional 
uh, disturbances if you're not, you know, going through that with a uh, guidance. Um, another point I just added actually today is, uh, and some, some people say, well, I don't have time. I just have uh, some minor stuff I want to talk about. So, yeah, I call it, if it's negative, it seems like complaining. You know, you complain about uh, your, you know, husband, your wife, your brother, your sister, your relatives. You, you complain to this person. Fellow complain, therapists. Yes, <laughs> complaining therapy. Well, we don't have a complaining therapy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, so ended up, um, you know, you ended up talking to people, different thing, people about the negativity in your life and that may, make you a negative person. And uh, most people don't know that I always emphasize it uh, in my therapy session. Complaining is not particular griping, complaining is not particularly effective um, in personal life. First of all, it makes you a negative person. Second of all, when you are talking about it, you're reinforcing, your ears are hearing it. So, as the brain working here, you're talking, talking, different people repeat the same negativity, and your ear is hearing it, and that's, that's not the point of a positive type of life, positive living. So we want to try to limit those negativity, just like, uh, I'll give you an example, the iMessage. iMessage is very effective in communication. So instead of uh, starting with, why don't you? Why did you? Uh, how could you? Uh, you started with the I, right? It's very effective. You say, um, I feel disrespected when you talk to me like this in public, right? You started with that, that's iMessage. Uh, but I message also comes with an important element, which is provide suggestions. So mm -hmm. otherwise, you would just be complaining the whole time. You know, I feel disrespected, Mitch, when you do that with your clients. I feel, I feel angry when Megan is doing that. So then you're just complaining, complaining. I feel this, this, and then when you do this, this, this. So the important element is to provide a suggestion in the I messages so you don't sound like a complaining. Complaining is not effective. So you'll say, would you please next time do not talk to people in public like this about mm -hmm. me? Something like that. Or Megan, would you please next time? But I don't expect the people always to do what you want them to do. So that's the hard part. You say, I stating, I want, you know, something done. And then you put a suggestion there. So that's my point uh, of today. Um, hopefully I explained clearly why talking to family and friends uh, cannot replace therapy and now I'm going to ask my clinicians uh, if they have um, you know some other points that it can be helpful you think okay I definitely want to make the point that it is helpful to be able to talk with friends and family but here we're trying to discuss why it is also essential that you talk with a therapist for their for the added benefits I don't recall if Jackie mentioned that confidentiality is one of the most important aspects and elements of a therapy session or a therapy relationship. Oftentimes when we are talking with family and friends, we can't be sure that they might share that information with someone else. And by working with a therapist, you have assurance that everything that you share is safe and kept just within that room and within the bounds of that relationship or anyone that you choose to give the therapist release to share elsewhere. And along with that, I have worked with a lot of teenage clients and what I have heard over and over from them is that oftentimes friends come to them and they entrust them to hold certain information that they have shared and oftentimes that information then causes a stress on that person that has now heard this information or heard part of someone's story, which mm -hmm. can include things like Jackie mentioned, either traumatic experiences from um, their past or even current things going on. A topic that has come up often in my sessions and talking with people is that a friend told me that they were feeling suicidal and they asked me not to tell anyone. With that, there comes a very large amount of responsibility and often people are not equipped to know how to handle that stress then of holding that or knowing what to do or how to direct that person to get the appropriate help that they need. And so again, with meeting with a therapist, they are trained to know how to handle that and how to guide, effectively guide a person and how to handle that level of responsibility without um, the client then having to worry about 
if I tell this to my therapist, do I need to then feel concerned about how they're going to handle this information or that part of my sherry, that my story that I just shared? Very good. Yeah, that's a good point. The confidentiality point. is, yeah, it's very important to, in um, a therapist that establish the foundation of um, of uh, therapeutic alliance, and it's and we'll down the road we'll make more. Uh, videos about how important the therapeutic alliance mm -hmm. to the outcome and not the therapy session but uh, you know uh, for a majority chunk part not the the successfulness not the therapy is the therapeutic alliance is is how much you you trust your therapist and is willing to to work with your therapist uh, on different things well you've been very thorough ladies and not <laughs> sure uh, what I have to add actually I am um, I just want to kind of build on something that both Dr. Jackie and Megan have alluded to and talked a little bit about. And that is, you know, the difference between talking to your friends about your problems and talking to a therapist about your problems. And one of the things that, that uh, they, both Megan and Jackie have touched on is the whole um, how your friends respond when you talk to them um, about your problems and in my experience as well as the experience of many of my clients they're often wanting to fix you or fix the problem and so a lot of times when we're sharing our personal information with other other people we're not necessarily wanting someone to jump right in and say we'll do this or do that or or you know snap out of it that's that's a good one um, the difference then is when when you go to a therapist and you share what's going on in your life you see a therapist isn't just to give advice in fact many good therapists give very little advice and their goal is to give the client the skills to solve their own problems and to cope with their their moods their anxieties their depressions whatever it may be Many people are mistaken when they think going to counseling means the counselor is going to tell me how to do everything or how to fix everything in my life. And at least I see it a little differently. Mm -hmm. And that uh, my goal is always to empower the client to come right. up with their own solutions and mm -hmm. implement coping skills or whatever they need to implement to get through that time in their life. Right. Counseling actually is just a small scenario. Um, not a bigger, broad area, their own individual life. So goal counseling is always to promote the independence so they can yes. live and uh, apply what they learned in a small setting uh, once every week, you know, in limited time. These skills they learned to apply to their bigger, bigger um, area environment. And skills are applicable. Uh, it's transferable. So what you learn actually to relate to your counselor, you know, you're talking about if you're female relating to a male, male authority figure, right? If you are uh, a kid that it, um, relating to authority figure as your therapist, whether it's a female or male, right? If you have some damaged relationship with, uh, for example, a male or female, and then you work with that gender, female, uh, or male, then you establish therapeutic alliance, it's a healthy relationship. Uh, and then you can apply that a skill to working with you know, your boss, your coworkers, you know, your kids, your whoever. So these skills learned are transferable, transferable, applicable to different situations. So that's why I think you know, therapy is very valuable to any age, uh, any problems. Uh, sometimes I just I recommend that people you know periodically in your life with different sets of a problem come to therapy session discuss about you know different things with a uh, therapist that you trust. Again, I want to emphasize this: as therapeutic alliance is, is to me is very important, but not the most important thing in a uh, therapy session. So find a th uh, some therapist you really trust um, and to work work with. Um, um, it really doesn't matter the therapist in my opinion um, the therapist could be number one in the world the top notch therapist but you don't feel you trust this therapist you don't feel connection you don't feel relate relating to the therapist is probably not going to be super helpful you know you want to find somebody you really feel connected to okay and well this is great I could go on for a long time with this
I'll just close with one thing for me, and that is all this discussion, um, and then w what I said about how the therapist tries to help the client grow and you build on that, makes me think of the saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Yeah. Give, teach a man to fish and you feed him for life. And is our right. goal is mm -hmm. to feed people for life. Megan, anything else? No. I will end on the same note as Mitch. I like that. All right. Thank you. So then you push the little iOS and then it starts recording. I don't know. Are we recording now? We are recording. Oh, we are. Cut. Okay. Well. <laughs> so we're